Uh, just to set the stage, I wanted to share this cartoon with you. Probably some of you have seen it before, but I think this is an important, important idea established here. Uh, because I spend a lot of time working with faculty, I do want to know their perspective. Are they focused on teaching or are they focused on learning? Because those, those are not equivalent. Yes, they're, they're related, but they're not equivalent. And so you might have different priorities depending on, on what you're focused on, on, on teaching or on learning. And that sets the stage then, of course, for this session on, on pedagogy. So earlier you looked at the essential, essential elements of the LA model. Manhurst shared that with us all. You know, some, some of you got the chance to talk a little about uh, the pedagogy course, but that's what we're going to focus on for the next 30 minutes or so, is this idea of the pedagogy course. The way I want to frame this with you is LAs are not born, they are made, okay? LAs are not born. They do not come to us ready to go. They have to be made. They have to be developed, just like faculty to, to be developed. So ped, the pedagogy course is about professional development for LAs, and it's what distinguishes this peer model from other approaches to using undergraduate students. The pedagogy course is a distinguishing feature. If you say you have an LA program, but your LAs don't have a pedagogy course experience, you do not have an LA program, all right? I'm gonna tell you that. I am a purist. I am an LA agent. I don't have my cape, but I'm here to tell you that you have the, some elements of an LA program if you have, if you have LAs but don't have a, a pedagogy course. And so we're going to explore a few of the ideas related to the pedagogy course. Obviously, we could do a whole weekend just on the pedagogy course. Just out of curiosity, how many of you teach the pedagogy course at your institution? Just a couple of you. Okay, okay. Um, uh, it's important, however, even though there's only a couple of folks that actually are teaching this course, it's important for everybody to understand what, what goes on in a pedagogy course because that does influence the way that you interact with LAs, that, the way that you run your program. Now, just a little bit of background. I run the program at North Dakota State University. I do want to clarify, Hagit said I was at University of North Dakota. No, I'm not. That's the rival. Uh, definitely not one of those, uh, those UND people. Um, and as many of you are surprised, what? There are two universities in North Dakota, right? <laughs> Technically, there are 11, okay? Just so don't, 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 don't be so disparaging about North Dakota. We're, we're actually a, 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 a great place to be, um, though I did have to shovel snow before I left for the airport yesterday morning. So it's fantastic to be uh, be here in Miami. I actually did uh, my graduate work at University of Florida, so I'm actually, I do know what it's like to be uh, in Florida. Though Miami is not technically Florida, right? It's, it's a whole, whole other country. Um, at any rate, uh, I run the LA program at NDSU. Uh, we, our program has been in place since 2012. Uh, I'm currently uh, in my 13th semester of teaching our pedagogy course at NDSU, our course is called The Science of Learning. They'll explain a little bit more as we, as we dive in. Helping me out, of course, is Laurel Hartley, who's at CU Denver. Their program started about the same time. Yeah, and we're, we're good partners, uh, CU Denver and NDSU. Because our programs are about the same size, uh, we run 60 to 70 LAs a semester. Uh, we're in approximately the same or similar departments. Uh, um, what we're going to focus on initially here, and, and this is definitely interactive because we're right after lunch and you need to be engaging with each other, is we're, we're going to distribute uh, a handout. And uh, it looks like what you see on the screen here. And uh, as I mentioned just a little while ago, uh, LAs are, are, are not born. They have to be made. Therefore, they have to have some sort of development. And so we want to do some, some initial thinking about the knowledge, the skills, and, dis and uh, dispositions, attitudes and beliefs, that LA should develop over the course of their initial training. 
And so on this handout that you see, it's a, it's a Venn diagram. And there's a circle that represents the knowledge, the circle that represents the skills, and a circle that represents those dispositions, those attitudes and, and beliefs that we hope LAs would develop. And so what I want you to do just for about uh, 90 seconds is on your own, try to come up with one or two knowledge, skills, and dispositions that you could enter in the, that Venn diagram, and then we'll move into a more of a collaborative time. But we want you to think about what should LAs uh, know, be able to do, and, and value in order to be successful LAs. True. Which is why we do have to work at the institutional level or at the department level to think about how are we going to prepare LAs. We need to have a pedagogy course so we can prepare them to be successful, but what we include in that pedagogy course is going to likely be variable. Now there probably are some, some, some common themes across, which we're going to explore in a little bit, but there probably are some, some local differences, and that's okay. The LA model should be flexible and adaptable to the institutional context in which it's going to be employed. And the pedagogy course is no exception. So, there isn't a one-size-fits-all model for the pedagogy course. All right, let's hear out some of your ideas that you, that you came up with. What were some of the knowledge ideas that you came up with? What were some of the things that LA should know? Anybody? Here. I think it's important for them to know right off the bat the reasons for the LA program to exist. Absolutely. So why do we even have an LA program? That's actually the first component of my course. Why do we have an LA course? or excuse me, why do we have LAs? Why are we trying to transform courses? I want them to understand their purpose in this. Thank you for sharing. Right, so which transitions nicely into this idea of this, uh, more, uh, also a skill. It's, it's important to know something, but you have to also to be able to do something with it, which gets us into the skills, right? Uh, you probably, maybe you've heard this expression, uh, we, have the, we have content knowledge, right? The knowing the stuff of a particular discipline. We also have pedagogical content knowledge, PCK. Some of you might, might be familiar with that. That's actually knowing how to teach that particular content. And there are definitely elements of PCK, pedagogical content knowledge, that can be incorporated into a pedagogy course. One challenge you have to be concerned about here, though, is how... Well, it, how, is your, how is your pedagogy course structured? Is it interdisciplinary or is it a pedagogy course for a very specific discipline? CU Boulder, and I'm not sure, actually sure how it's operated here at, at FIU. Um, CU Boulder, FIU have really big programs. And so they, they can offer multiple sections where there are an, an, an individual discipline is represented in the section of the pedagogy course. At NDSU, I don't have that bigger program, and I don't want to teach seven different sections of that course. That's a huge time commitment. So we do an interdisciplinary nature. So we don't get too focused into particular discipline-specific pedagogical skills, um, but we approach it more broad. Approach it more broadly. Uh, let's transition a little bit. Uh, another skill. Can anybody share another skill that they think would be useful for for students? Our LAs? Yeah, over here. Critical listening. Critical listening. How to listen carefully to the students as they're interacting with them. Okay, yeah. Patience. Patience. Yeah. I have some colleagues that could learn that, to be honest. Uh, the, that, I think that also ties a little bit into attitudes and values like this idea of dispositions. Are there dispositions that you all share, to, share with each other that you talked about? What, what, what's an example of a disposition? Or, uh, yeah. Ability to work with others. Ability to collaborate. Different, different. Yeah, ability yeah, to collaborate. Respect, uh, respect for diversity. Respect for diversity. That which rely, relates back to this theme of, of cultural, culturally responsive teaching, culturally responsive interactions. One, uh, one issue, issue that I uh, really stress with my LAs, is, particularly new LAs, is helping them realize that the students that they work with will not be like them. Many of our undergrads think that they have a very limited worldview and they think that everybody thinks like them and knows what they know. 
which is not true, right? It's not true at all. And so the first time they encounter a student who is struggling with something that they find very simple, uh, how they react in that situation is pretty, pretty telling about their effectiveness as an LA. Effective LAs know how to negotiate that, that particular situation where, where they have to work with a student who, doesn't, who is encountering difficulties in something they find really easy. Excellent. Okay, so uh, we're going to transition. So we have these uh, different ideas about the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that, that LAs need to develop in order to be effective as, as LAs. And what I hope you realize is if you, if you, were, to, if you were to aggregate everybody's ideas, that would be a, a monster list, right? That would be a monster list which would be really impossible to develop in like a two-hour training before the semester starts, right? A one-shot forgot, we've all, we've all participated in those, right? One-shot forgot professional developments. That's not going to work if we want effective LAs. So we need something more sustained, which is why we have the pedagogy course. It's a long-term, in practice, meaning they're serving as an LA and continuing to work on their professional development. That's why we have the pedagogy course when LAs are new the very first semester. And in fact, why, it's, not, it's why they don't take the pedagogy course beforehand. They take it in practice. So it's an in-service uh, commitment. But if we were to have this huge list, we realize, yeah, we've got to break that up. And, and I'd be honest, I think in a semester, we can't really fully address everything, but we can make some substantial progress. And so some things we want to think about then, and here's another handout for us, and, and we're, what we're trying to make sure you do is have lots of resources. One of the most important things that you can gain from a, a workshop like this, thank you, is a connection to a larger network, a connection to resources. And that's what we want to make sure you have. And so the handout that's coming around now is focused on some possible topics, themes that you might include in a pedagogy course. And so we want you to, what I want you to do is take a look at this, this handout. And you'll notice that uh, there's a bunch of topics listed in that first column. In the middle column, it has a brief description just to help frame it a little bit, most of you aren't going to be teaching that particular course. But as, as faculty, you should have a sense of what's going into that course. And you cer certainly should be collaborating with the instructor of the pedagogy course to help determine what is being, what is being uh, you know, discussed and, sh and shared. So, what I'm going to give you just a couple minutes to do, because we have to be mindful of time here, is, is to focus on what are some things that you think would be the most important of, of this list? Which of these areas do you think would be most relevant for your institution or your, your uh, department? And then add to the why column why should we have our LAs in our particular program, in my particular course? Why should we have LAs focus on this particular topic, this particular concept? The course at NDSU, I, I teach it. In the fall, I offer two sections because I always end up having more new LAs in the fall than in the spring. I teach one section in the spring. My, my, uh, um, my course, it's called The Science of Learning. It's the Science of Learning Seminar. And there are really three themes that I focus on. And because if you were to look, you know, front, back, that's a lot, that's a lot of topics, right? And you certainly could spend roughly a week, of, that could be the week's focus on, on that. Uh, that doesn't appeal to me, um, so I only focus on three themes. One I already mentioned was why do we have LAs? Why do we transform courses? That's our initial focus, and we spend uh, the, uh, the first few weeks of the semester focus on that. So we actually look at the research on the LA impact. We look at the research on, 
on active learning, on the impact of active learning, and what course transformations does do to student learning and student engagement. That, so we situate, so LAs see what their role is, what their purpose is. Then we transition into cognitive science, which you see here is listed as uh, uh, like this mental models idea, what cognitive science tells us about learning science. So we focus on what, do, what does cognitive psychology tell us about how learners learn best? What are the strategies that we should be using, not only as, as students, because our, our LAs are students, but so that they can then model and mentor the students in the courses for which they're supporting to, in effective study strategies in their disciplines. What's the, most, what's the most common study strategy reported by students? Oh, I, I reread my notes, right? That's argued as, the, the, like, that's like one of the least effective approaches uh, uh, to, to study strategies. In, in, in our Science of Learning seminar, we focus on the strategy of retrieval practice. And that has a substantial amount of evidence supporting its use. So I work with, with the LAs on how they can do that as students, but then also how they can help mentor their students to, to engage in that particular practice. And then the, the third theme, which actually takes up the bulk of the semester, to be honest, is about interaction strategies, which actually does probably combine some of these themes that are listed here, like the questions and questioning strategies. Um, but we really focus on interacting because that's what LAs are doing, right? They are interacting with learners. They're helping learners learn. And so we, we need to really develop their interaction strategies. What are, what are some other rationales for what, what you would include and why you would include it? Anybody willing to share? Sure, so how to make, take advantage of all the resources that are available to them. So include that, because then the LAs can serve as a vehicle for spreading that to other students. Excellent, Laurel? Because yeah, they're, they're certainly, LAs are certainly well placed to, to interact with students, right? And, and I have, uh, anecdotally, my LAs will report to me that, oh, you know, I have, I'm working with a student who's in crisis right now, you know, they've, or they've, they've reported to me that you know, they're in crisis right now. And it's about getting the, the LAs the right, uh, helping them redirect students to this, the resources that are available on campus. Yes, sir? Like I, I think there's definitely some overlap uh, with, with, around interactions. Because at, at the end, uh, I mean, the, the, the most useful skill that LAs can have is about interacting effectively with, with, with students. So helping the LAs anticipate the types of questions that students will have so they can reply to that. Yeah. I think another, but another extension of the questioning is how do LAs become good questioners, right? How, how do they question students? Uh, I should have brought this. I didn't bring it this time. Um, I have a, my LAs have a t-shirt and on the front it says, ask me, I'm an LA, because it's about fielding questions. But on the back it says, please explain your reasoning. Because that's what we want the LAs to do is engage with students and make sure that, that the, the students really understand the reasoning for the concepts that they're exploring. But we want the LAs to question them to get to that. Comment over here? Yeah, I would think so. So my, my LAs, I have to tell you that uh, uh, this is like a, uh, a, point of, a point of contention for me. So we do actually have learning preferences. I agree with you. We have learning preferences. Um, but are there any psychologists in the room? Just a couple, actually. Yeah. So this, uh, I, I'm here to tell you that learning styles are a myth. Okay. There's no such thing as learning style. We do not learn better in a particular domain. But we do have preferences. My LAs come to me telling me that, yes, but I'm a, no, you're not. We have all these senses. And guess what? We can learn through all of them, as it turns out. So this is actually a, a big argument that I have. Um, uh, if you want to see the re re uh, references, I'll happily give them to you. But learning styles don't exist. And that's actually a part of my cognitive science approach, is to help them realize you've been lied to. I apologize. <laughs> because in high school, you had to take a learning styles inventory. And you were told that you were a kinesthetic learner. You were told you were a, a visual learner. You know. I'm here to tell you that's bullshit, and we don't talk about that word anymore. Uh, but yes, you do have learning preferences. And we all have pr ways that we prefer to engage with 
concepts. But I would argue that disciplines actually have uh, uh, some, some, some um, styles built into them. I wasn't exactly, so I wasn't going okay. that way. That's a, okay. And so just, you triggered me. Uh, you totally triggered me right there when you said learning style. That is a, that's a trigger I, I, word. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. We'll save it for later. Katie. I mean, that, that's, that's such a challenging part, right? Because humans are tough, right? We are tough. Uh, dealing with people, it's tough, right? It's tough. And so, uh, th but those skills are, end up being really useful, just how to engage and interact with the wide variety of people that we're going to encounter. I, 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 if you teach a course where you assign groups, I teach a course called Foundations of Science uh, where I have to assign groups, and they, the students always balk at that, right? They're like, ugh. You know, I just want to work by myself. And I, my, my follow-up to this is I'll, I'll always look. Name a profession where you work solely by yourself. The only one I can come up with is nighttime security guard. And I don't think you need to go to college for that. So start learning how to work with other people, right? It's a useful skill. All right, we got to transition because of time. Uh, I could keep going. But there's a third handout that we want to share with you. Because, OK, so you've, you've thought about some of the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that LAs would need. You've, you've narrowed it down maybe into some like, themes that you think they should address and why we should, we should do that. However, how are they actually going to develop these skills? Right? How are they going to get this knowledge? And so what's coming around now is a, a set of example projects and activities that your LAs could engage in to actually develop some of these skills. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we, in the Science of Learning seminar that I teach, my students do an LA video project where they have to record themselves interacting with a student or a set of students. So this could be something that happens during class. It could be something that happens outside of class, maybe during a help session or an office hour or something like that. But they have to record themselves interacting with students. And then they have to analyze that interaction. They transcribe it. They report out what percent of the words were spoken by the LA, what percent were spoken by the, the student or students. They analyze the number of questions posed. By, by the stakeholders there. And they also do what's called a plus delta chart. We focus on the positives. That's the plus side of the chart. So what were the positive aspects of that interaction? I also have them focus on the delta side, which is the change. Like, what are the improvements? And it's a, that's a really important idea. We were talking about in my group a little while ago about this issue of criticism. Uh, n most people don't respond to criticism well, right? So that's why I don't do a plus negative chart, because it's really easy to list the negative things that we see. But really, we should be focused on growth and change and improvement. So that's why we do a plus delta. As a complete aside, do you remember that video we watched a little while ago, Levi, the LA? My LA's report that they think Levi's creepy, the way he slides into that table. I just want you to report that. I just want to sh share that. <laughs> They think he's creepy. So anyway, uh, that's, everybody has a different perspective, right? Even when we see the same things, we don't always perceive those interactions the same way. Um, all right, so anyway, what I want to share with you is a bunch of different ways that we can help students develop these skills. Because as I showed you at the very beginning, telling isn't, te isn't teaching, right? Telling isn't teaching. We have to be more engaged if we're actually going to going to teach. So just telling LAs, hey, you need to know these things, that's not going to be sufficient. right? They're going to have to engage in more meaningful ways. Project activities help. One of the ways that I do this with uh, emphasizing interaction skills is we do lots of role plays. So I give, I give our new LAs these scenarios that they then have to figure out, okay, here's a, here's a group of students and they just want the answer. They don't want to wrestle with the reasoning. They just want the answer from the LA. They're, and I, of course, I tease my LAs like, you're not answer assistants, right? You're, you're learning assistants. You've got to help them learn. <laughs> but you, you know, here's the situation where you're going to encounter a student or students who just want the answer. Just give me the answer. I just need to know. I, want, I just want the clicker points, right? 
So what are you going to do? So we role play it, and they have to go and figure out how they're going to how they're going to interact as an LA with a group of students that just committed to getting the answer. And then we fishbowl it, where we all all the rest of us stand around and we watch that interaction unfold as they role play, and then we plus delta that interaction. Okay, what could have been better in this situation? What are the deltas? What could we improve? Or excuse me, plus, what would we see that was really good? What could, we, what could we improve in this interaction? So that we're constantly practicing and working towards these, these ideals that we want our LAs to engage in. All right, so we've shared a bunch of resources. You'll notice that there's a couple links in the handouts. Those will get you to, to uh, even more resources in your implementation guide. Uh, which is that spiral bound thing. Uh, it's like page 45-ish, I think. There are a couple pages that, that elaborate on the, the pedagogy course. I will tell you, um, there is a model that's already out there. CU Boulder has shared their model. And you could probably plug and play. I, I don't think it's going to be that effective for you because your institutional context is going to be variable, right? It's not, doesn't match CU Boulder. So this is why we want to spend time as committed faculty to think about the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that we want our LAs to have across disciplines, within disciplines, and come together as a faculty to really provide a rich opportunities for these LAs. What questions? Are there any burning questions? We do have to wrap up because I'm already 10 minutes into the next session. But uh, what, what burning questions do you have about uh, the pedagogy course, the ideas of the pedagogy course, the role? Katie. Um, you're a math professor. Well, so I'm a, I have a super weird role. So I mostly actually do fac I, I'm housed in the dean's office of the College of Science and Math. I am a faculty member, but I have like a 65% service appointment, so I'm, I, really what I do is faculty development. Just currently we have STEM faculty teaching the pedagogy course. Yep. I think we might be moving towards education faculty. Yep. Teaching. And it seems like a different place to be Yeah. Yeah, so I think that uh, you pay attention to your local context. Uh, your local context matters. Uh, I think STEM faculty can bring, bring perspectives that people not, that were in education um, I have different perspectives. I think it's a balance. My background I, is curriculum instruction and assessment. So, and because I do faculty development at the, you know, at the college level, it's a natural fit. Not everybody has my background. Um, STEM faculty certainly have some, at least experience, if not expertise, but some experience with teaching college level courses, and that is, that is beneficial. Uh, bringing in somebody, uh, you know, like if you can do a co-teaching model with someone who has more of the cognitive science principles, it can be really, really effective. Um, but it's, it's always about local context and, you know, who, also who's available, right? Because that's, that's the challenge. Um, at the Learning Assistant Alliance, we don't like to say, oh, it has to be this person. Because ha you have to make it work at your institution. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. It's, uh, I would tell you, across the alliance, it's highly variable. Uh, at NDSU, it's one credit. At CU Denver, it's two credits. Um, and that, that tends to be uh, related to the credit model at the institution. Um, so I only meet for mine 75 minutes a week. I know Bud works two hours a week. Yeah, yeah. Does so that, that help? It's, I would tell you it's highly variable. In some cases, it's a zero credit. Uh, course, um, and in some cases it's not even a course per se, uh, but it's a required weekly meeting with new LAs and then somebody that's coordinating that. So the idea of the pedagogy course is not that it has to be an on the books course per se, but it needs to be an established weekly sustained professional development over the semester. Okay, here. So you guys have been doing this for 10 years, but scalability of this type of course, if yeah. you can't fill a class, yeah. nobody's going to be teaching that class. That's right? correct, yeah. So how would you start with a smaller program? Yeah, so small, definitely smaller program may not be an actual course itself. It may be this weekly professional development, required professional development um, that, you, that you engage in to help accommodate. 
Um, we started with a small one credit course, but um, the, our program uh, just blew up. Uh, and and that wasn't an issue. I, I I don't I don't know other L agents. Have we encountered a program where the, the that did, did didn't blow up? That's right. That is that partnership started with the community colleges and a couple of community colleges in Colorado. They actually are taking an online version of the CU Boulder course because those students are going to transition to hopefully Boulder. Or, you know, that's that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So you start. To, so that's why we come to something like this to network. Yeah, Hagit. Like yeah. So that again, that's a lo, that ends up being a local issue. I, I actually, I think you all in Florida, y'all have uh, common course numbers, don't you? Um, the uh, yeah, that's a local thing. Uh, for us, it's just a general elective. Um, I don't know about what it counts at. General elective, yeah. I, I know of some institutions within the alliance that they are able to get um, a major credit, a credit in the major for their, their pedagogy course, but it's only a small number and not very widespread. It tend, tends to be more of a, a, a gen ed um, uh, credit. 